The first diagram is what you've been seeing over and over again of a particle, body, object moving in a circle on a flat horizontal sort of like a table or something like that and then you've got a string and your particle is moving around and around in uniform circular motion. So we have seen this many many times before. Okay. However, this is always a bit weird, like, what is this particle and what's so special about this string that for some reason it's just like this weird magical, it's just going round and round because someone said it was, okay? What's making it do that? This is actually not very normal. What's far more normal is if this string is lifted up off the table. Can you imagine lifting, in fact, let's just, I'm going to draw a little table for you. Okay. So here's my table, right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the center of, my, of, um, of um, this, this point here. I'm going to move it so the string is actually up above this table. So I'll draw it over here. So here's my new table, right? I'm now lifting up the string so it's sort of up here, okay? Now if from this point I get this thing to keep on going around, right? Uh, like so, here's this kind of thing, there's P, here's the new center of motion, okay. It can still move in a circle, it can still move in a circle, it can still be uniform circular motion, but the shape that gets traced out, the shape that gets traced out, as you can see, is a cone. Is a cone. So that's why we call this a conical pendulum, okay? So this has its own sort of, there are lots of interesting things about it, which is why we sort of um, pull it out as a, a special scenario. So what's a natural question to ask in mechanics about a physical situation? It's a natural question. What is, what is special forces. about mechanics? It's about forces. It's all about forces, okay? So let's try to understand what forces are operating here, okay? Because now I'm now literally in 3D, like I'm not just like sort of 3D, I'm, I'm, I've really got to worry about this, okay? I've got to think about what's happening up and down, and then I've got to think about horizontally on this table, okay? So what I'm going to add on to here is that I've got a, um, a weight force pulling down, mg. I've got a reaction force coming up off the table, and then I've got the resultant force that's um, on horizontally, which is moving this thing around, okay? Now think about this. This guy here, MG, right, which is heading down this way. If I have, I'm now going to redraw this, but with, with less like fluff around it, okay? If I have this looking side on, here's a right angle, here's where my object is, here's the center of motion over here, okay? Um, we know we've got MG heading downwards like this. Sorry, I should draw it longer, but it's, um, I've run out of space, okay? You've got the thing holding it into the motion is the tension of this string. Right, so I'm going to call that T for tension. And it's pulling toward where you're holding the string. This weight is going away. Okay? Now, it's on a table. It's on a table. So therefore, how much movement is happening on an up-down vertical axis? There's no motion, right, in terms of up-down. So therefore, this weight force and the part of this tension, think projectile motion, think resolving forces, the part of this tension that's pulling directly upwards, they should be exactly balanced. Does that make sense? They have to be balanced. Um, this positive and this negative have to equal zero because otherwise it would actually be moving up and down. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, a line up here. This is why I said this really should be longer because they're balanced. Okay. This line up here is the vertical component of the tension force. Okay. I'll have a right angle here. And then I have a horizontal component. Now, we were just talking about this vertical component, nothing's happening. There's this horizontal component. The horizontal component is what's making it move in a circle, right? It's moving this way, toward the center, right? So that's the direction it's facing. Okay, now to work out everything, remember with projectile motion, I said, if you're gonna resolve forces, you need to know, of course, what angle you're facing it, right? Because if you fire in that angle versus that angle versus that angle, you will get different amounts contributing to vertical or horizontal, okay? So this angle up the top, we tend to call theta. It's, we, it's often called the semi-vertical angle because you're sort of um, half of this cone, okay? 
Now if that's theta over there, that means you also have theta over here because of alternate angles on these parallel vertical lines. So now can you help me work out, what is the vertical component of the force from this tension of the string? What, what sort of um, ratio am I going to use here? So this is the vertical component. <coughs> this is the vertical component. Here's theta. I'm adjacent. And the tension is hypotenuse, right? So cos theta is this on this, right? The vertical component on that. So if I just want the vertical component, then um, that's going to be t cos theta. Just multiply both sides by t. Is that OK? By the same logic, the horizontal component is t sine theta. Excellent. Uh, yes, correct, but that's because of where we're measuring angles from, yeah? Okay, so far so good. So now I want to try and bring all this together, and I should say, what's balanced and what's creating a um, uniform circular motion. So let's do the easy bit first, vertically. Vertically? I've said that these two things are balanced, so I could just say they're equal to each other, but I've already mentioned before, just my personal preference is to say, look, if this thing is positive, because you know, away from the earth, I'm gonna call that a positive, I'm gonna call this a negative, so I prefer to write it like this. That shows there's a net force of zero, it also shows what's going up and what's going down, as opposed to just saying, oh, they're the same value, but I don't know which is which, okay? So from there, I'm just going to stay this, okay? Um, this is going to be important for me later, so I'm just going to label that as equation one. Now, what about horizontally, on the table, what's happening? There is uniform circular motion. And I know for uniform circular motion that the resultant force toward the center of that motion is negative. Or sorry, I just said towards the center. So that's just going to be, the magnitude will just be m r omega squared. Right? They should be equal to this. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say horizontally, T sine theta equals M R omega squared. Okay? Yeah. Aren't they moving in the same direction? That's why they're equal. Think, think. So you, yeah, you're right. So they are they're headed this way, right? T sine theta is going this way towards like the center of the string, okay? But in order for uniform circular motion to be taking place, it has to be going. They, they have to be going that way, which is one of the lovely things. Like this is about saying, oh, these are balanced, right? This is more about saying this produces that, right? Now you will also notice I've got T sine theta here. Please do not, do not draw an arrow here and say M R omega squared, okay? Because there's no force happening here. It's the resultant force. Okay, it's the resultant force. So it's just like you wouldn't say um, on here, you wouldn't draw a zero force somewhere because there isn't a zero force. Zero force is the resultant force. In the same way, m r omega squared is what results from this guy. This is the only thing happening horizontally, so it must be equivalent to that. Does that make sense? This is also important, so I'm going to call it equation two. Okay, wonderful. So how am I going to get out of this? Oh, we're, we're trying to understand forces, right? So what's the tension in the string? The tension in the string. Uh, I've got two ways of, of stating this. I could state it in terms of uh, cos theta mg, right? Or I could state it in terms of mr omega squared. Which do you think is going to be more useful to me? Mr. Yeah, mr omega squared is going to be much more useful because then I can say, oh, what, how, will, how will the force change? So I'm going to write this. I'm just going to divide through. This is a superior way of stating the tension because I can now understand what happens to tension um, as the speed of the, uh, the angular velocity changes, as the radius of my circle changes, and as the mass changes. Whereas if I wrote this one, T equals mg on cos theta, like, well, gravity is the same thing, it always is, and mass is going to be constant, I assume, and then you know, there's not that much that's interesting compared to this. So far, so good? Okay, so I've got my tension. But I want to go a little bit further than this, okay? Because R, like R is this thing here, right? It's not inherent to this situation, and it can change, actually, as you will see shortly. What's much more important to me, um, I'll put it on here, is the length of this string and how it relates. What happens when I have a shorter string or a longer string, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and relate this length with radius and all that kind of, um, all those measurements on both diagrams. 